Hello friends, welcome to this week's edition of Build It, Fix It. I have a concert that's coming up soon, in my own backyard, of course, and I'm actually gonna be using the marimba for this one, but the problem is one of my keys on the marimba that I just built doesn't sound as great as the other ones. That's the G key down here. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll show you what it sounds like on the marimba. It's okay, it's not out of pitch, it just doesn't have that long sustain that I'm looking for in my bottom register. So compare that to my E flat. And then my G. It's just a little dull. So I think what we can go ahead and do is try to cut another key, see if we can go ahead and get one that's a little more resonant. The wood, it really depends. It could be the exact same tree, it just really depends on the density of that specific piece. So there's no way to tell unless you kind of have your own thing going on like Marimba One does, but when you're buying them from retailers here in Pittsburgh, you can't really tell what's gonna be good and what's gonna be bad until you cut it and hear what it sounds like. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first step is gonna be taking this off of the Marimba and then copying it to another piece of Purple Heart and then we'll be ready to go. So as you can see, I have this massive piece here of Purple Heart, and all I need to do is get this section out of it. The problem is, last time I was cutting up my Purple Heart, you can kind of see here, it's not completely flush. Um, and because of those warps and bends in it, it almost destroyed both my table saw and my circular saw. I'm probably gonna try to rough cut this in my band saw, and then once we get it smaller, I'll put it through the table saw so that the edges will be sharp and nice. This is probably the most crazy, insane cut I've ever done in my life, but I am super happy that it did not destroy my table saw or my new circular saw. So I am totally satisfied with that, and I will clean up the edge for sure on the table saw. I just need to make one small cut at the top, and then we'll be good to go. I've got this handy dandy jig from Rockler that I'm gonna use to cut my first side so that I know that it's straight, and then I'll cut it to width on the other side. Using my old G key, I'm going to set the width for the final cut. Finally, to get the correct length, I'm going to cut using this sled that I built for my table saw. My nodal line is starting lower and going higher here, so we kind of want it to go in an upward trajectory. Natural occurring nodal lines are never straight, so if we can figure out which way it's going, we can figure out which side is going to be best for the top and the bottom. So it's starting to look like, to me, that this one is going to have more of this kind of an angle. We're gonna test that out once we finally carve the bottom out, but if that is the case, then this is gonna be the best top side. Now what we have to do is we have to get this shape into this bar. The way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna trace this on top of here, and then I'm gonna use my router inside of the table to take away as much material as we can before we go to our grinders. So let's get started on that. Again, these pencil lines that I have here are just gonna be guidelines. I'm not gonna be using them for final tuning. I'll be using my ear and the tuner for that. But this is gonna give us a good indication of how close we can get with our router before we have to move to the sander. So right now you can see my pencil line there and how much I've routed out. I don't want to come any closer than that because I don't want to screw over the tuning in this. 
The big trick is next we're going to try to get it in line as much as possible. So full disclosure here, I use a strobe tuner on my phone to tune the marimba. I don't have $400 to invest in a strobe tuner and this works great, especially on the low end. What I'm going for now is a G-sharp 2, a G-sharp 4, and then a C6. So what I'm gonna do is search for where we are right now. That's an F3 right in the center of the bar. Now, if I hold the center of the bar and strike right here, I'm gonna get my second tone. Okay, so that's a D sharp four, or I'm sorry, a D sharp five. So we're going with an F3, D sharp five, and then our last one, I hold the edge of the bar up here and I strike in the center. About an F6. So, in general, I want to be careful because I'm trying to get them into two octave intervals as fast as I can, but depending on where I take away from the bar, if I take away from the center here, that's going to drop my fundamental, but it's also going to drop the other partials as well. So it's kind of a little dance here to see where we can take away different things to make sure we get that alignment straight. And then once we're in line, hopefully we'll be close to G sharp two, maybe about C3, and then we can just have a smooth drop down. So let's get to it. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with where we are for our rough tuning. Our first fundamental is here. G sharp two minus 25. Our first partial is here. G sharp four minus 25. And then our third partial. Is about at a B542. Now, the reason why I'm not as concerned about the third partial is because that's the hardest partial to drop without affecting the other notes. So it's gonna be really easy for me to drop the first and the second, and as I'm doing that, the third one's just gonna naturally come down a little bit. So that's no worries at all. Also, as the bar sits and cools down a little bit, it's gonna go sharp. So I'll have a little more room to play with as we approach it. But now, we're gonna route the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with 100, then we're gonna go 220, and then we're gonna go for 400. On the final tuning. extremely close to where we want to be. Again, as I'm sanding it, the bar is getting hotter. So we're going to have to let it cool down to get that final tune. It's probably going to raise about eight cents, eight to nine cents. So right now you can see we're at plus 13. Ah, plus 19, 14, 16. It's swimming around down there. And then that one's at about a plus eight or plus 10. 
So what we're going to do is just going to let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes, let the bar cool down, let everything settle down that's inside of it. And then we're going to go ahead and do some minor adjustments, probably with just sandpaper. And then we'll be good with this key. So we let the bar cool down and it's sounding a whole lot better. We were able to get it right there in the plus 20 to 22 range. So I think the fundamental was at 20 and the partial was at 22. Um, so we're really excited about that. And just to show you before we slap it on, this is the old key. It probably vibrates till off, off. And it's also sounds, it just sounds a little more dull. It doesn't have that rich undertone to it. Here's the new one that we cut. Off. Off. Again, the old one. The new one. I'm really excited that we were able to find a better key for the G because that's going to sound a whole lot better for our G major suite um, from Bach. I'm going to go ahead and test it for a couple days before I put the polyurethane on, just in case I need to do some minor tuning tomorrow. I usually let them sit overnight before I do polyurethane, just in case there are a few final touches that I have to do with the tuning.